Kia ora everyone. We've got the the OG, the man when I uh, you know I started out on Anchor when Gary V said just start recording your thoughts and then I was like right no nah, I'm gonna go full hog and go podcast mode and uh, this man here the legend Liam McElwee stepped up to the plate said yeah I'll, I'll come on for an interview I'll I'll dabble in long form conversation I think we lasted about half an hour so we did all right. <laughs> Is it all right? Hey, am I right in thinking it's almost exactly three years as well? Oh, nearly, nearly. I think it was about August. So yeah, you know, we, we're getting there. Yeah, um, about four, three or four months away. It's pretty, pretty sick, you know. And this podcast has come a long way. It's come a long way in the last like two days. So I finally got some pointers on how to use my microphone. Three podcasts deep, and turns out I was working it backwards. So. That's cool. You've bought yeah, one. Yeah, and eh? I saw that you just sold it for one point five million or something. Is that right? Yeah, no. So I think I, I pipped Joe Rogan with yeah, one hundred and twenty-five million. So nice. The, the dreams happened. I bought the farm. You know, the the gym's there. Everything's. It's all there. You're you're invited. I'll I'll fly. You know, pay for flights for you and the whanau down from Canada. Too man. easy, yeah, man. What a what a what a great great way to make a lot of money. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> Mate, um, you'll be there next. Uh, what's what's it? What are you learning so far? You're three episodes deep. You you're doing it hard. You're doing it good. You you committed, and I might have lost you. No, you're there. Yeah, I'm here, mate. Yeah. Uh, that's the biggest thing I'm learning to deal with. Uh, so it's six a.m. in the morning here. I woke up in the middle of the night and did uh, one. I recorded one down in Australia at midnight. And I guess, well, there's two big things for me. Um, the first thing is trying to do what I'm doing right now, which is slowing my little monkey mind down. Uh, I get very, very, very excited and I take away the conversation instead of letting the, the, the guest speak. So that's been a, it's a, it's a great learning tool to, slow down to learn to communicate and listen a hell of a lot better and then with that is probably learning to deal with a little frustration uh although we're in the modern age internet's not as good as you would think it would be a lot of the time <laughs> i don't I've, I've lived in australia and i know that a lot of australian internet is not great and now, yeah, now I'm out in, in rural areas of New Zealand and I understand those Twitter wars that the rural community have been going on about, you know, get us some better internet because, gee whiz, um, it's there sometimes and then it just goes on you. It's crack up. <laughs> yeah, I just thought, like, and it's, you, you'll be in the middle of a great conversation and then, uh, 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 and from a, from a, uh, a host standpoint like you want to jump in and say something but then you don't want to affect their great story at the same time so mate if you've got any tips on that one I'm all ears practice <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I think what's really cool from my perspective like working in a sort of 40 minute time frame at work where there's a you know a series of things that need to be done um there's a, there's a flow to it and, and that's one of the things that i'm experiencing is coming back to work with this COVID 19 stuff having to then be conscious about infection control the whole time and, and worry about what you've bloody touched and what you've disinfected you know we we were hygienic before but now this has just gone up a level and it's completely thrown the flow and so I think that's what, you know, is quite good in the early days of podcasting is it's that whole, you know, series of learning. First, you're completely incompetent. You don't know what you're doing. And, and I'm still finding that with elements of, of, of recording things. There's, there's things that just go, well, how do you even do that? Um, then you learn a little bit and, and you practice it and you fumble your way through it. Then you start to get a bit of flow and then it just becomes automatic. And when you get a little disrupt you know, like in, in the job that you're doing, you know, it's coaching, it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's interactive, 
um, but then you disrupt it, you change the, the scenery, you change the uh, the tools and the, and the mediums, and all of a sudden you you fumble. And I, I don't know if you saw um, Dana Ban's uh, talk on the weekend about communication. That was one of his communication tactics: is to get a message across to his uh, athletes. Some you know that guy's a freak. He, He'd, you know, talk to them while doing a handstand or hanging from a chin-up bar and oh, <laughs> jugg- yeah, no, I've got jugg- jugg- that juggling some balls and and, and and tell them a message, you know, he's a champ. But, yeah, how, how have you found the difference between working one-on-one with a client to having a one-on-one conversation where you're wanting to get a lot out of the person, but at the same time, you're wanting them to express it? Yeah, it's uh, it's obviously very, very different. Um, from this standpoint, there's not a lot of, di- not directing, there's not a lot of opportunity sometimes for dropping a question. So like I said, you know, that, that listening tool has to be a little bit sharper. So you can just let them flow, let them go with whatever they're doing. And then come back and and remember what they've said and and touch on points that they've actually already been through and one of them's really sticking out for me and it was probably gosh he probably talked for 15 minutes non-stop and you don't want to interrupt because it's great and they're just going and and they're happy to be in their place and they're happy to be heard and that's more important that's that's way more important that you give that person that opportunity to talk um, and and go through whatever it is that they want to go through. And I guess if I forget some standout points, then I forget some standout points. But like you said, it's sharpening your tool. I've got my pen and paper right here beside me because, once again, my monkey mind at 40 years of age now is nowhere near as sharp as it was when I was 39. <laughs> <laughs> two year decline mate i probably had a you know two year decline with that concussion i had a couple of years ago mate you're dealing with a little bit of that these days tell us about that um stim- what is it stimulator <laughs> oh yeah so yeah um well i won't be anymore we're not going back they're not reopening unfortunately Far out. yeah yeah which is a it's a it's a shame it's a it's an amazing job so i work at a uh, well worked at a uh, private residential rehabilitation center and it's all focused around the brain so very very holistic um we have people that have um substance abuse, drugs, alcohol, concussion, um, mental health, uh, whatever, whatever the, the case may be. But um, so we work on nutrition, we work on movement, we take them out and we go to yoga studios and we get vitamin IVs and they go to, we actually use some really, really awesome, awesome different tools that Probably when I started there, I was like, "Oh my God, are you kidding me? This stuff's woo woo." Uh, we do, we do, we do uh, a thing called body talk, which is a lot to do with uh, Reiki healing yeah. um, and, and energy. And man, to be honest, like I said, I probably if you were to sit down and tell me what it was all about, I would just laugh at you. But seeing it in the flesh and having somebody's body talk to them and tell them what they're going through and the amount of emotions that it brings up uh, with the client is just absolutely amazing. We then use something called sand tray therapy, which is a form of play therapy. Mm -hmm. And this woman has like a room the size of this room with thousands and thousands and thousands of toys Mm -hmm. or um, toys or artifacts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or um, what do you call it, ornaments or things like that. And you just go around the room and you you just uh, grab whatever is feeling or bringing up an emotion with you. So you don't want to look at it and go, oh, that reminds me of mum. It's just like, oh, okay, that bought something up. I'm going to pull it. You bring it into the middle and then in the sand tray box, you create a world. And then she will evoke conversation and say, well, tell us about your world. And then the world actually links to 
everything that that person is going through. The subconscious mind has been able to express what's going on. And man, the amount of emotion that one brings up is absolutely fantastic. And then more so to your question, we use a brain wave optimization machine, which uses, uh, uh, what do you call them? Electrodes, not ECGs. Yeah, same, same. Electrodes along the brain in different positions, prefrontal and uh, there's a, I mean, they can go everywhere and anywhere, basically. There is a system to it and it, it reads the brain waves that are going on inside your head within milli, milli, milliseconds. It distinguishes what that brain wave is and then it spits it back to you in exactly the same frequency, but as an audio response. So it's mirror, mirroring, mirroring, mirroring. That word sounds very weird. It mirrors what the brain is actually doing. And within that mirroring, it actually brings the balance of the brain back to what it should be. So instead of being too much in the parasympathetic or too much in the sympathetic, it just brings everything back into balance. So you're not more one side than the other, but you're just optimally working your brain. So a little bit different. Uh, it's, it's very based on an inside out approach. Whereas, you know, a lot of the therapy for the brain uh, and around the world is an outside in where you're dealing with, you know, audio response or visual responses. So uh, it's pretty fantastic. Wicked man, that um, the the brain stimulation thing sounds a very in in terms of concept sounds very similar to the syntonics that I got introduced to just before um, COVID lockdown. We had a guy come out from Australia who's done a lot of work with the guys that are in the states, and again, it's about uh, presenting lights that are at the uh, end of the spectrum that's underdeveloped, so either parasympathetic um, fatigue, so trying to boost the parasympathetic system or um, uh, sympathetic ad adrenal fatigue, so trying to boost the, the sympathetic system back up so that you know someone's got a bit of oomph and a bit of energy again. Um, and again, so you're either stimulating with the right uh, red light for the sympathetic nervous system or blue light, and then you're finishing off with um, green and on either side of the spectrum, so to detoxify and calm the system back down in exactly the same way, trying to bring that person back into a, uh, inverted commas, balanced or flowed or uh, syntony as, as syntonics comes from, bringing them back into, into sync. So, yeah, that sounds super fascinating. And I was, you know, I think that's another one of those things that you hear on Joe Rogan and then to all of a sudden see you, you know, working with it. And then again, you hear it on Joe Rogan and I'm talking about it. You're like, oh, yeah. And then oh, they, really? Joe Rogan's talked about I'm, it? I'm pretty sure there was, they had a couple of um, dudes from the army on that had been using it. Um, yeah, they do a lot of the, the guys that own it and run it, do a lot of work with army PTSD and all that sort of stuff. But, dude, it's um, it just makes sense, right? Like, yeah. you know, when, you, when you have heart disease, you, you work on the heart. When you have kidney disease, you work on the kidneys. When you have a mental illness, a, a brain injury, concussion, whatever it is, you talk about it or take drugs. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of like balance work going on. So um, yeah, it, I love it. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't, I'm a simple man. I don't a hundred percent get it. And when you sit in there, it's freaking trippy as anything, but um, sitting in on sessions and seeing what it's done for some of the clients, I just, I know it works. It's amazing. So what was your part uh, in, in that clinic? Um, so I am the jack of all trades, the master of none. Uh, I <laughs> my way up uh, into the head coach position. Um, and basically, I, I did everything and anything except running the actual brainwave sessions. Uh, obviously, you've got to be trained by the person down in the US to where to place them. And, and they do a lot of, like, it's direct feedback with the clinic down in the States. Yeah. So, yeah, my main thing would be like the mindset coaching, uh, the, the physical coaching. Uh, did uh, We had private chefs, but uh, there was a few occasions where the private chefs called in sick or something happened to them and I had to step into the chef role as well. <laughs> um, I was chauffeur. I was cleaner. I was, yeah, you name it, I did it, man. It's, uh, I loved it. it was, it's going to be hard to find another job like that, that's for sure. Yeah.
And so, like, you've moved around a little bit since going to Canada, and, and like, obviously, that's always tough. You've got young kids, you've, you know, transitioned through jobs. Like, you must miss New Zealand a bit, man. <laughs> I, uh, I hate it. I hate it, mate. I don't. I, I don't. Um, I don't love Canada. Um, yeah, I miss home. I've never felt like I have fit in here. But in the, during these COVID times, I've actually done quite a bit of reflecting and uh, with creating the Chasing Man group and and sort of diving more so into, you know, the funny thing is that when you're a, a coach, a life coach, or you know, a health and fitness coaches, you're always working really hard on everybody else's successes and you don't really sit back and evaluate your, yourself as much as you, you should or you could. So you, your self-care sort of goes a little bit out of the window. So with COVID and, and not working 12-hour days anymore and having a lot of time to myself to reflect and to do all these awesome things like getting really fully back in a health and fitness and meditating and, and doing the chasing man stuff, I really realized that I, I don't give anyone a chance. <laughs> I really don't give anyone a chance. So, you know, like, and this is the great thing, once again, with chasing man is, you know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not God gifted. I'm not uh, the, the epitome of man. I'm just a man on a journey as well. And really realized recently that because I think that I'm never, ever going to end up staying in Canada, I don't actually put the effort out there to be a contributing member of society. I don't go out and meet people. I don't make the connections that I... I really, really long for. And, uh, you know, there's been a long time where I've complained that I don't fit in and, and that I can't meet people. But I'll tell you what, Ryan, it's bloody hard to meet people if you don't go out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I can, I can definitely um, appreciate and, and sympathise um, with, with you. Um, there is even a, a little bit of empathy. Um, and, and I guess that's probably the life the life stage in that um why why it's only just being empathized is that with being able to play sport when i was moving around didn't seem such a big deal but now coming to hawks bay and and knowing a couple of people has helped um getting involved with the deer stalkers club has helped but again it's shit it's a slow process eh? like been here a, a year now and it's kind of like I'm still at the stage where it's like my mate who I'm now living with down down here in, in Central Hawks Bay and then you know one or two others that yeah that, that I met through the deer stalkers and, and you know like like you say the, the commitment of time the, the commitment of space um is, is really really difficult especially when you know you've got family commitments as well you know and, and like you said with the job being away from your family the responsibilities that 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 brings um to then find that little bit of time to be selfish uh and and you know try and do something for yourself so you can show up for your family becomes a real moral dilemma right eh? <laughs> yeah and then and then once again this is why it's so great that like I've, I've started doing this chasing man thing because everything that i've done in my life that has sort of been it's all been working up to this point i feel because now that I'm doing it and you talk to men and you know, like I'm diving in with my coaching with clients just a little bit more, every man seems to be going through a lot of the same things. We, we step into this provider role and, and, and we want to be there for our kids and we want to be there for our wife. And the next thing you do is you turn around, you look at it and you're like, wow, man, no, no wonder I'm not feeling great because I'm not actually filling my own cup much at all. Mm. Yeah, I think we're in this strange, you know, we're in really strange times because, it, like you say, you, you can't even go back to the place that was sure and secure. Uh, um, and, you know, in, in my case, we've, we've been able to go back to work, but shit, we, nothing, nothing better blow up again or else uh, I, mean, I might, might be joining you on trying to, you know, for the likes of this podcast or, or farming or, or something, finding another way. And, and 
I think it was kind of the the low key fun of the lockdown was looking at other ways. Um, what's what's the support in Canada like for you as someone from the Commonwealth? Um, and, and has it has it been you know supported or or are you you know no shaking your head oh no it's absolutely amazing it's uh like i talk to people in australia and new zealand and i think canada has got this part right however it's probably going to bite them in the ass down the road so Mm -hmm. uh being a um contractor consultant um i'm not entitled to emergency insurance uh, sorry employers insurance um however because of the pandemic and so many people going through it that they just they created a um a support for all consultants and contractors it literally took me one phone call an automated phone call it was five minutes and i had the uh financial support in my bank the next day so yeah we get $2,000 a month, which is super helpful. Uh, and it started with up to four months and now it's gone up to six months. And it takes me two minutes on a computer to get my next month into the bank the very next day. But like I said, you know, this is there's no check boxes being ticked off so when it actually all calms down and they have to go through it there's going to be a <laughs> there's going to be a shit show for sure but uh, i i don't care about that i'm just appreciating everything right now because i'm doing everything right and, and it's fast it's effective it's efficient uh, it's it's fabulous oh it's pretty pretty amazing and, and like is your wife is she from is she canadian yeah, she's Canadian, yeah. Yeah, and so has that meant anything for you, the fact that you guys are married and you've got a child and <laughs> you're living there? Like, well, what, what's that? Uh, so I'm here on a permanent residency anyway, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess if I was on... Visa working or something? It would probably be different, but, yeah, the permanent residency definitely helps a lot. Yeah. And and so, you, are you in Toronto now or nearby? Or? Nah, we live about an hour and a half from Toronto. If I was to give you uh, a reference point, I would say it's something like uh, Whangamata or Waihi. It's where I live is, we'd probably be the youngest in our division. <laughs> We'd be the youngest in our division by about 30 years. Wow, yeah. Uh, we have the world's longest freshwater beach that no one can go on at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's heaps like uh, Waihi. Nice. So, what's the, you say you've got a beach there, but you can't go on. What's the sort of guidelines and what are you seeing in terms of enforcement of recommendations and <laughs> is it it's funny man because we don't have that structure that new zealand had like you know this is code one code two code three code four or whatever you guys called it it's just um like it's looser now but man it's 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 pretty ridiculous like i just don't know what i'm allowed to do what i'm not allowed to do i mean i guess that happens when you don't watch the news and you try and stay positive mm. um like it's just i just feel everybody here is over it like everybody's totally over it they i like you just want to be able to just you know have i guess what the u.s always harps on about is that freedom that you know it's your choice Mm. um uh, yeah man it's 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 crazy times it's really crazy times we're not allowed to use uh, the beaches, we're not allowed to use provincial parks, we're not allowed to use um, playgrounds for kids. We're in week 10 of that now. And then yesterday mm. they just released that the kids won't go back to school until after summer holidays, maybe. And that's uh, middle of September. Frick. <laughs> so, yeah, we're 10 weeks into lockdown and um, like, I don't think my son has had any interaction with any other human being other than uh, me, my wife, and her parents. Speak of the devil, you gonna say hello? You can quickly say hello, quick. Come on. Sorry, he's just waking up. You nice. say hi? Morning. Your very first podcast. Hi. What do you How's got to say? Going? This is Ryan, but he's actually recording a show, so is it all right if you just go down and watch some TV? 
Sleeping like a champ. Love that. Love you that t-shirt. You did sleep like a champ, didn't you? All night. Epic. <laughs> yeah, so he has like an because I don't know, us being adults, we have a, a few adult friends that are sort of coming back into the bubble because we're 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 just over it. We're fine with it. We're they're they're healthy. We still keep the social distancing and stuff like that. Mm. But he's like, well, why am I not allowed any kid friends? You know, yeah, and yeah. it's tough, man. So how old is he now? Uh, he's five and five and a quarter. Yeah. So did he get to go to school or no? Yeah. So our school system's obviously a little different. So they go. September to June. Yeah. So yeah, he's already been at school since because he's born December twenty sixth. This is the crazy thing, right? So their school is September to June, but it's your birth date at January first. Yeah. Right. So he and he's born on the twenty sixth of December. So he first started school when he was three and three quarters. Right. <laughs> Kindergarten. So yeah, man, it's it's crazy. Like he's he's man, he, like he's probably as advanced as I was when I was ten. <laughs> not, not that I'm a sharp dude, but like yeah, like it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, man. Like that's why I think um, Billy's semi-lucky. Like she's um, with with Alex. She's with her grandparents um, now. Sort of. With level three and then especially now level level two, so that's the sort of de escalating things over here. Um, she's had like uh, her great grandparents from both sides around and um, her auntie around, I think a couple of family friends around. So, like, she, she's loving life. <laughs> and um, Alex's parents' place is on sort of three hectares and then it looks out over market gardens and Pukekohe. So, there's you know plenty of space. There's some alpacas just down a paper road and you can go around the paper road for an hour walk so yeah nice she, she's living the dream you know none the wiser that hey everybody else or i suppose her grandpa's work, working from home and so that's what's quite cool you know he's he's still working from home he unfortunately injured himself and and he's you know he's become a vulnerable person all of a sudden and but you know, win-win for uh, for my wee girl. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's a shame she's not a little bit older because as she gets older, she will probably forget about this t- crazy time in life, right? Whereas my boy, being a bit older, it's like, dude, like now we're trying to go out for like hike, illegal hikes, and you know walks, and 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 we're just going out in the streets and riding your bike. And he's like, well, no, I'm okay, I'm I'm all right. Like he's just he's almost getting so cabin fever that he doesn't even want to get out of the cabin, which is, it's concerning. But I mean, you know, the great thing about being a, uh, a strong masculine dad is he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> you know, some, you, sometimes you got to think back to your childhood. Eh? You, go, you know, that, those, those um, firm, you bloody well, we'll get outside uh, conversations did you good. And then you're out there for, three hours and they had to, to had to wrangle you back in again so oh for sure mate really <laughs> gosh I, I can remember you know like being outside all all day all day you wouldn't go out you wouldn't go home until like the sun was going down right and it's just a different time it's just a different world it's just like it's evolution baby mm. so you said like the the community sort of 30 years older than than you how do you sort of feel about him playing in the street over there like what's that like? oh so safe yeah oh so safe man he like you know when we go out and like he's got a skateboard and rollers roller rollerblades and like we just do it all on the road because it's smoother and there's hardly any traffic down here and every single person in this development is out walking dogs so mm-hmm. you like we we know so many of so many members of the community it's awesome like there's an old dude just 
down the block, he looks like Santa Claus. He walked past last night and he literally plays the role of Santa Claus with my son. Grayson will be like, hey, Santa. He's like, hey, mate, how you going? You been a good boy this year? <laughs> you know, like, it, it is a really, really lovely community. But you just you just miss that uh, the same age demographic where you can, you know, talk about the same things and relate about the same things. Or like, you know, I work out every single day and they all think I'm crazy. <laughs> whereas it would be great just to have someone like yourself to go hey man do you mind if i jump in and, and do a workout with you like they're all looking from the from the bleachers throwing stones and thinking that i'm, I'm part of the losing team <laughs> mate on the on the bleachers throwing stones you, you shared man in the arena yesterday it's always good to revisit that little quote like theodore roosevelt's pretty inspirational for me being a you know a New Zealand hunter and, and thinking about what he did for conservation in the states and what he, how he gave the wapiti to New Zealand like um what a what a powerful like little spiel about just you know if you if you're there doing it take notice of the people doing it and, and ignore the ones as you say throwing stones from the bleachers what what sort of landed with you and what sort of brought that up um for you at, at this time it's just it's just everything in this journey right like you, you want to surround yourself with the right people you want to take massive action on whatever it is that you're that you're heading towards and you're striving for i think in this day and age with i don't know technology and and wow right at the moment the lack of jobs and all that sort of stuff there's just so many people that are, are dancing to the beat of the war drum and just watching way too much netflix and and sitting in the bleachers and like i said complaining and bitching and and, and not really going out there and, and and either you know fighting what they're passionate for or um trying to make a change for everybody you know it, it's easier to it's easy to talk about things and complain about things it, it takes a lot of hard work to actually go out there and do stuff right and i hate that mm -hmm. i hate it when people say oh it's too hard because it's not fucking too hard man dying of cancer is too hard living out their last days on life when you know you have a terminal disease that's hard losing a child that's hard hmm. complaining about your political system or losing your job or you know the all these little things that you have complete control over that it's not hard man it, it just comes down to you know really working out what's important to you making the choice to go after it and like once again i'm i've had my times where you know you fall you fall in line and you jump up on the bleachers and then the next thing you know you're all sucked in and then you look around and you're like shit i didn't pay for a bleachers seat man i was supposed to be <laughs> right down there i'm supposed to be right down there not even bloody watching i'm supposed to be on the field so yeah, just a just a lot of stuff really present in my life that are really driving me towards being better, wanting better in my life. It's always been there, but uh, you know, when you get pushed into a position where both you and your wife are not working and the income's not like it used to be, you have to get resourceful and start chasing things that are important to you and 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 you know that you've probably thought about for a really long time but haven't actually taken the action steps towards them mm. and, and you know it's it's a common theme that and it must be the a sign of the times again you know and sort of gary broke the internet the other day and i even saw somebody sort of paraphrase what he wrote in a tweet which, which i thought was quite funny and i kind of thought to myself who wrote this first but you know that was that was about basically that you know you can read and, and get inspiration and motivation but until you bloody do it nothing's going to happen and and um that's it's, you know i bring hunting into my life a lot of the time because there's, there's a common saying with that and and that's you don't get any animals or a full freezer by sitting on the couch and so <laughs> you know um you do think do you think that's a bit of a, a sign of the times like you know enough, enough complaining enough you know, being in that amygdala, that that uh, reptilian brain, not even not even just you know primal activities, just really just re reactive and 
God, what happened? Um, do you think that that's it? You know, like you, you guys, 10 weeks in, I think, you know, the, the states have similar time period. It's, you know, we're all thinking that it's enough bloody talking. Let's, what's the plan? What's the next move? How, how do we move out of this? We've, you know, I heard, I heard someone today saying, you know, we flattened the curve. I thought that was the plan. What's the next plan? Did you have a plan? Was that even a plan or was that a narrative? Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's a, but that's what it seems like, right? It just seems like we were so reactive and then like listening to things like Elon Musk on Joe Rogan, right? Like really diving deeper into like the numbers are not real numbers and, and, and you know, the only real silver lining out of this that we'll probably get is it's going to be really great practice for when we do have a proper pandemic, when we mm. do have 20-year-olds that are dying, you know, like I think he said that the the average age, death age at the moment is actually the average death age. <laughs> so well, even like, may, Maybe higher in some places. Like I Yeah, know. and it, it's just, that's Darwin's theory. Like there's, there's, there's part of me that is thinking, right, there's got to be a lot of old people in homes that are, thank God, thank God, I'm, I'm on my way out. This thing's going to take me. I can't be bothered sitting here and fluffing about anymore. And then you've got the family members that, that are probably sitting there on the sides as well going, well, you know, it's been going on a while and they're in a better place now and they're not suffering with all the stuff that they're suffering with. Like, you know, it's just... Yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to speak out of term for anybody because everyone's position's different. But like, when I'm, you know, quite thankful and, and grateful that that my, you know, grandfather passed away in, in February. One, we got to have a funeral. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, you know, and, and in the case of him, um, we had like a, a little service for him to be cremated, and then we had my brother's wedding. It was, you know, it wasn't a movie. It wasn't four weddings and a funeral. It was, it was just just the one wedding. Oh yeah, we we had the um, little service for him to be cremated, and then we had my brother's wedding, and then the next week they all went down to Invercargill and, and had a full-on service with people invited and, and things like that. So you know that was that was another grateful thing, and and you don't want you know somebody that's got things like you know in, in, uh, already had like trouble breathing and trouble swallowing and and you know sore limbs and, and things like that. you don't want them to just get knocked around by a flu. You know, you know they'd just be Know, not not dignified or, or whatever and, and and like you say yeah it, it is almost one of those things where yeah you don't want to speak out of turn and like you say there is the odd person that i think joe Rangan was saying everybody knows a guy <laughs> you know well oh, this guy yeah but i know it's it kind of sits with me with the thing that i sort of journal i don't write memento mori but i i journal the amount of you know average days that you live the 33,000 days and the 86,400 seconds in the day like that's that's what you got that's what you got and if you're there worrying about yesterday or you're anxious about what's going to happen well then you've wasted those seconds you've you've knocked down another one of those days and I think a bit of a bit of and, and maybe it's like you dealing with people that have had you know, bad injuries and, and, you know, living in areas where, where people, you know, are leaving the world and you just sort of get a little bit of realisation of, of what life is and that worrying about stuff that you've got zero control over and, and like you say, being being offended or, or put off by the political situation, which, you know, the alternative political situations not that much better and no. the other, and the other half of the country now have a problem so <laughs> it's a, it's again one of those things like get over and start start doing the things that you can bloody do yeah man it's uh it's it's uh you know i don't mean to sound like an asshole when i say you know all that stuff about the covid stuff because like you said, you know, that dignified death. Like, I can't think of anything worse. A friend of ours actually had a friend whose father died of COVID. Mm. You're alone, man. Mm. You, you're on your way out and, and you're alone. You can't have anybody around you. You can't have your family. You can't have your friends. And all I can think of is that poor man mm. laying 
his bed just knowing that he's on his way out and he just can't tell the people around him that he loves them. Mm, shit. Yeah. And then, you know, the people that he does interact with are in bloody spacesuits. Like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot to be said for, for dignity and, 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 and that sort of stuff. And, you know, that's when you, again, dive down a rabbit hole that's probably a bit more worthy than a lot of the rabbit holes you can start diving down at the moment, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, and I don't know a lot about that stuff. Once again, not not reading the news and not choosing to follow the news, but I have a friend who's, I guess I would say he's he's a geophysicist. He's a, um, he's a professor, so he's pretty intelligent. And he started rattling off all this political stuff that's going on in the world in the background that we don't actually know about. Yeah. And I'm like, serious? What are you kidding me? Like he's telling me stuff like India have just passed a rule that, you know, if, if there's a Muslim that you're not getting along with, you can actually see you later, mate. And get away with it. Gee, and then there's the things in the US like Donald Trump just going around and electing new judges all around the country without anyone else having to sign it off, building his empire. You know, there's all this underlying political change and influence that's going on that's just being hidden right now with this whole COVID thing. And you know, I can, I, once again, I can make this choice right now to go, wow, holy shit, that's crazy. Oh my God, why is that happening? That shouldn't be happening. Or I can go, hmm, is that affecting me from doing what I can control right now or what I can do? Because really the only control or the only input I can have is on my local government at the moment. So, you know, I'm going to focus on, on what I can do around here and what I can improve in, in my current situation. And then hopefully that bleeds out. Yeah, man. And, you know, go sort of a bit like individually showing up for your family, you know, getting your family together, getting your, your, your unit together, getting on the same page, being as, you know, health, healthful and, 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 you know, uh, getting mindsets right within within the the sphere your, your sphere of influence, um, which then will hopefully radiate out with with the people that they interact with. So, yeah, I know it's it's tough, and, it, and it, you almost like you say you can't control it, and it's not worth the overwhelm. It's and yeah, it, you've got to be careful with the rabbit holes you go down, and and the I guess the sort of clickbaitiness of it all. Like even even yeah. You know, I've got I've got quite a bit of respect for Sean Baker. He tends to put up a lot of stuff. He, he's a bit of a provocateur and, and things like that. But he sort of shared the other day that uh, apparently there's a move for you know New Zealand kids to not eat meat and or, or consume dairy. And I was thinking that doesn't sound right. And, and I think it might be half right. I think it might the 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 point of Meatless Monday might have been raised by by some of the Greens and things who are you know in our government at the moment. But yeah, the, the turned out the article come from um, a Farmers Weekly, but in like Zimbabwe or something. <laughs> yeah, and it was like a, a Reuters uh, quote that was like a one sentence from a politician that I've never heard the name of, <laughs> and and then one other person. There was like nobody from Ministry of Education or, or anything like that. So I think it was a little bit of a creative story, but again, it's like those those um, agendas that you see out there. You you know you kind of go. Oh, What's what's the the true agendas there? What's the influence it's going to have, and and, and how much is the populace going to stand for that? And and I guess that's what we we got to be careful. Even here in New Zealand, you know, we're wondering about, you know, what what do we have as freedom as a New Zealand democracy as part of you know the Commonwealth? Who's, who who is the crown, and and what do they mean to New Zealand? And you know, what what does it mean to stay in shelter in place in New Zealand and don't don't do your job unless you fit this criteria and you know the supermarket gets to open but the butcher and the and the green grocer don't you go oh, this, is, this is all a bit a bit strange but at the same time you've got to then go well these are just human beings that are making these decisions and like all of us they're probably a bit flawed um and, and didn't think of the consequence of that that decision they just made a reactionary decision and you know thankfully we saw a little bit of easing off of that and and i'd imagine even now with this level three and we're going day by day without any new cases. I think it, the, um, 
the shackles might release a little bit as well within the country, but shit knows what we're going to do about other people coming in. <laughs> Dude, you got to, like, I have full respect for everybody in, in their positions because, you know, it, you, you'd, you'd probably testify to this. There's no dad book, right? No, no. no dad Bible. So just like there's no dad Bible, there was no COVID Bible. There's no COVID manual. Like people are, are and I, I, you have to, you have to firmly believe that everybody is in these positions is trying to do the best that they possibly can. And, uh, it, you know, it, it may be right. It may be wrong. Um, and we'll probably look back uh, 10 years from now and go, well, we could have done that better and we could have done that better. But I tell you what, there's aspects of my fatherhood that I probably could have done better as well, right? So it's just a one great big learning curve. And I think the, the main thing that, that you say that resonates with me is just just do that for yourself as well. Just do the best that you can possibly be. Uh, I don't know, you're probably familiar with it because you're a very well-educated man. Uh, the the book, The Four Agreements. This is the book that keeps, one of the books that keeps entering my life that I still haven't read. So I do, uh, am aware of it. <laughs> just like, it's just great, great tools, great four great tools to live your life by, right? And, and if you, anybody can follow those four rules, which is super simple, then you're going to succeed a hell of a lot more in your personal life, your work and life, any relationship that you have and, and probably push you towards a, just living a better you. It's, it's like anybody listening right now, I wish I was making money off this and, and, uh, and, and people were going to go out there and buy it by the buttload because I know after selling your podcast for 1.5 million, you've got a lot of people listening. Um, <laughs> oh, but to be, I'd be honest, I, I wouldn't really care. Just go out there and get that book, guys, because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's huge. <laughs> um, I was going to say, yeah, you, you brought up a really good point and I was talking about that today with my boss, like, you know, as optometrists or, or like as your father, like you're saying as a father, think of, think of the mistakes you make on a daily basis. Now we're all just lucky that um, it's with one person that, you know, they, they're in the case of, of a parent, they love you or in, in the case of a um, practitioner patient relationship, they trust you, you know, and they know that you've got the best interests and they know that they can come back to you and you can fix it or at least try to, to fix it. But think about that, you know, in the case of New Zealand, you, you multiply that by 5 million people. <laughs> in the case of uh, California, 40 million people. I don't know how many people probably live in the United States or Canada, but, you know, try to just multiply your day-to-day -day little mistakes by an impact over a population and then just go, yeah, I don't know if I'd do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if you'd even want to try to do a better job, right? Like, I'm thankful there's people out there that want to be in those positions because, mate, I can barely articulate my own words, words at the best of times, like to articulate a whole country. So, no thanks. Yeah. Um. So, like, we've, we've been talking a little bit about the sort of, you know, men's work sphere. And, and I was talking with someone before I came on here who runs a podcast, and they are like, what's the ethos of your podcast? And I sort of said, well... It's life is ordinary. That's broad. <laughs> it's uh seems to be hitting with the twenty four to thirty five and slightly older male demographic. There's seems to be getting a few like fitness and health people and farmers and hunters. And then there's uh, a little bit of a men's work theme going on. And I said, but then that's broad again. That's a that's a deep and open can of worms. What you know, what for you, and, and I talked about it with you, it's about like the vocabulary to, to be able to go, well, this is what I'm feeling and, and then communicate it with, with people. Um, what, what for you sort of makes means where it keep landing or, or keep, you know, you, you sort of see it there and go, that's interesting. And, and I'll dive into that a little bit. You know, what, what attracts you to it? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, it's simple. You know, we're all men. Yeah, yeah, it is really <laughs> As a man, I, I've been through challenge. I've been through adversity myself. And uh, as of late, you know, working in, in the industry that I was in, it's definitely more male dominated. Uh, I don't think men, um, 
this is an observation. It's not for everybody, obviously, but I, I feel that the people that I've been working with just don't have the tools out there to be able to get through a lot of the challenges in life. And for that matter, even talk about the challenges that they're currently going through. Um, you know, we were on a call the other week. Uh, you you introduced me to uh, the group Every Man. That got me really excited once again about this man space. And they said, well, what would you like from every man? Where would you like us to go? Where would you like us to, what would you like us to do? And I said, well, you follow this whole idea of CrossFit and it's CrossFit for the mind. I want to do what CrossFit did for Olympic weightlifting and make Olympic weightlifting sexy. Hmm. I don't think that there is enough, like when I go on to my men's group chats, it's, I don't know, late thirties and above. I don't think that there is a, an enough younger men out there that are, uh, that are preparing for these later challenges that they're going to have in life because it's not shown to them that it's all right to talk about or that, you know, when things happen, you have a tribe behind you and, and you can voice those. And, and like, I think of just old, old caveman days or tribal days where they sit around a fire at night time. This is a bit cliche. They sit around a fire at night time and the older in the group tells the stories. And those stories were life stories of like, you know, how you go out and, 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 and you, you catch the saber tooth tiger or where you have to go to dig up the, the, the roots that we're going to eat or find the berries or, you know, this is the way you hold a club and, and hit her over the head and then take her back to your cave. Like, <laughs> like there's just not enough storytelling and, and, and education passed on in this day and age because we're so caught up in, in the rat race of providing and doing where maybe it's about time that we all just slow down, especially in our younger years and, and got some of this great information uh, from the elders and became okay with talking about stuff that in the past has been frowned upon or seen as a sign of weakness. Yeah. Like even for myself with, you know, going through a separation, you can sort of look at that and, and feel shame and wallow. And like I said, I was saying to, to Keegan Smith the other day, you know, there's sort of three options and it goes along with the sympathetic nervous system. You know, you can, you can wallow in a cave and, and hide away, freeze. You can um, escape and, and, you know, flee. <laughs> and I was, I was telling someone today, you know, use sex, drugs and rock and roll to, to not deal with it, but cover it up and, and pretend that you're doing all right. We well, can accept it and, and, and move through and, and be in that sort of flow state, that, that synchronous state, that, that balanced state. And that's where the money is. That's where the focus is. That's where, where things carry on. And And I was really grateful that, I sort of looked at the situation and and put put the story of, of failure to the side and sort of looked, you know, I'm not the first person uh, that this has happened to <laughs> and consulted some, some elders. Uh, um, you know, Aaron Griffiths that, that I recommended to you, that'll be, that'll be a really yep, awesome to it yesterday, mate. Great yeah. podcast. And, um, and Kent Mulligan um, from, from Modern Bar, you know, we had some, some really, really good, good conversations around, you know, making the best out of a situation which is like we're saying what you can do you got to make this best out of a situation and be the best that you can be and and show up the best way that you can be and then you can hold your head high and be proud of of where you are and in your life and in your journey and you can you know you can acknowledge that hey not everything was rosy not everything was right but that is what life is it's, it's not vanilla <laughs> and again that goes back to that vocabulary of good bad or all right like it's a pretty narrow band um, you know, pretty boring life. But if you've got some, got some highs and 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 you've got some interesting stories and tribulations, that, that, and that's where you get pride and resilience from by working through those things. Well, then, when you look back, you go, "That was that was bloody enriching life, well, it wasn't it?" You know, I, I lived a life. I just didn't stay in this narrow band of of vanilla life. <laughs> yeah, of participation. Participation. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, and it's funny you're you're bringing up this sort of. Um, rite of passage stuff it's come up a few times and, and it's part of the passion that i have for the farm 
um, you know, when, when Spotify does pay me the hundred million, <laughs> um, is to, to, to develop that, to develop this series of outers and mentors and, and connections. And, you know, I don't know, again, you know, how do you, how do you make, um, men's work sexy to, to, to some pre 25 year olds that know it all, you know, we've, we've both been 25, pre 25 year old males. You bloody know everything. You're invincible, but really you get to the about 25 and, and that's what Dan Doty's saying about every man is getting, getting those 29 year olds that are just going, you know, four years of banging the head against the wall going shit, this ain't bloody working. <laughs> um, and, and like you say, maybe, the, you know, it's great, but maybe that's too late. Maybe we need to make this, this sexier and, and, and it be the thing that a, that an 18 year old, a person, you know, even 16, you know, those last couple of years of high school where you're trying to figure out, what on earth is going on with me? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you look at the medical or you look at the, the fitness industry now, you, we we're always talking about prehab, right? Yeah. <laughs> like there, there's, no, there's no male, there's no men prehab work. It's just like, you know, you'll work it out. Oh, get amongst it and, and, and do it. And like, I don't know, I, I'd rather not... <laughs> I'd rather not go through things if I don't have to go through things. I'm pretty sure most people wouldn't want to go through trials and tribulations if you didn't have to. And like you said, you man, you always get learning out of it, which is fine. But a lot of people don't learn and a lot of people get stuck in that, in that little phase of their life. I think a, um, a great conversation for you to have. Uh, I had him on last night and I know you know him probably not that well, but um, uh, Andrew Knox. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. From Real Movement, you know, yeah. like that guy lost half his body weight. He yeah. was 180 kilos and he got down to 90 kilos. And he was just lucky enough to have amazing parents that showed him amazing amounts of love that gave him this great resilience and mindset that when he was in the shit he just got out of it like that that that's prehab to me right mm. but if he didn't have that support network if he didn't have the things that he had in his life like how long would he have stuck in that been stuck in that little dark hole you know mm. and there's a lot of people out there that are like that so um yeah it's just i don't know man it, you like I huff and I puff and I, oh, you know, like it, it is what it is, but it's a great opportunity. Like I, what a fabulous opportunity to be able to go out there and, and, and hopefully just through these, these forms of communication, podcasting or, you know, doing lives on Facebook or creating groups on Facebook, just to be able to share, share conversation and, 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 let have somebody listen to a simple man chat that I'm having with Brian Stagg O'Connor and for them it the light bulb turns on yeah. you know like oh shit shit that's right that's what I was doing and and that's all he did to get out of it yeah. like why why aren't we having more of these conversations I want to be able to like just play it on loudspeaker like a like a like a, a muslim prayer session <laughs> you know like it's broadcasted everywhere that everybody gets to listen to it and if only one person gets something out of it then that's amazing yeah and i think yeah, with podcasts especially in the early days that's got to be the aim like just just that one person and and you know the the messages that come through you know they're bloody wicked um and yeah it's it's funny that you talk about like the truth and, and and you know i think that model of prehab for your emotion or your being i guess as a man is is, is a massive sort of paradigm to put it through and and you know, speaking about the power of podcasts will fleming and i've been spitballing about this idea of primal truth and and again it's kind of like you know the campfire stuff the the rite of passage passage stuff just the the simple things that that you know when done shit they're easy you know and that's that's why something like wim hof i think is is really s simple but powerful it's like so you, powerful you don't, so you don't, powerful. Like, you don't I need just shit want, <laughs> i just want like i know the power of the internet and you know the power of doing online courses and stuff but i wish there was more people around here that were already doing it so i've got to start it man because i have a 
lake just there that's eight degrees right now and i've been getting in it and it is unreal it's unreal and all i have to do is go in and try and stay in for a couple of minutes and i get out and i feel recharged re-energized I feel like every single thing in my body is flowing the way that it should be flowing. And it was two minutes. Yeah. And how funny, like we keep bringing it up, like it never gets easier. Like I've been doing, you know, it's getting cold here. It's starting to, unfortunately it's starting to frost and we've got no grass still, but um, yeah, the, the shower is getting colder and colder. And how funny is it? Like, you know that how epic you feel afterwards, but like you say, you've just got to do it. The, uh, the, um, 101 reasons you get not to do it beforehand are just so fascinating. I think that's what the what part of the power of it, part of the accomplishment of it is, is like, yeah, I did that. I told that. <laughs> what is Derek going to say? You're in a bitch. Shut up, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Just do it. You know, like this. Yeah, I tell you, it's the brain is amazing. These yeah. walls that we put up are unbelievable. And a lot of the time, you know, once again, that whole idea, right? It's it's simple stuff. It's really, really simple stuff. It's just not that easy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, like, I, I, one thing I really enjoy, and I must thank you once again, is like, you know, having that, those accountability groups, like moving into this real movement group. What oh, a yeah. great group of people. Yeah. Powerful. What an absolute stellar bunch of people that all they want to do is build you up they want you to do better in life they want you to be better with health they want you to be better with wealth they want you to be better as human beings and having that person that's that's you know as an individual i i I know they're not watching me but i know that they're watching me (laughs) (laughs) it's funny it's um and even even if your again the brain's an amazing thing. Even if your brain's telling you that they're watching me, so I better do it, um, then that's probably good enough as well. Like before we jumped on here, I was doing the uh, side splits stuff because I keep seeing Lucas Aaron's you know side splits and other people in the group working on their side splits and even you working on your front splits and and uh, getting those knees working again or clicking again. I don't know which one oh, I was. Did on. you hear them? <laughs> I tried to do it today on the um, at, at work. We've got a little board underneath the desk for people to put their feet on when they're on the computer but i was like oh wicked i got a slump board and then i was yeah, cracking away and i had the sound and i was like oh, i can't hear that but yeah man i was hearing yours <laughs> oh man and but th- this is it right like so i'm at 40 years of age i had a monoscopy when i was 24 and i did not rehab that bugger like and i'm in the health and fitness industry right <laughs> Like I tell people all the stuff, you know, how important it is and blah, 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 blah. But like, I don't have enough time to do it for myself. So 16 years later, I'm at a position where I can't even sit my bum on my heels. Actually, to be honest, it's almost a 90 degree bend. It's horrendous. I'm 40 and I've already been like that probably for a good 10 years. I could never change my son's diaper nappy on the ground because I can't kneel. I had to always do it on a table or sit on my bum real awkwardly to the side. Yeah. If I'm like that now, what am I going to be like 50? There's no way I'm keeping up with a man and that's not what I want. So to have this amazing opportunity to realize that and go, Hmm, I can work on this and I can be awesome when I'm 50 or I can choose once again to go, Oh, well, it is what it is. They're screwed. I'm not going to get any better. And at 50, miss out on this amazing opportunity to work out with my son, to kick a football, to do roly-polies on the front lawn. You know, like, I don't want that, man. I have this amazing opportunity to be a better person, not only for me, but for my son as well. Dude, I'll take it all day long. Yeah, and I think that, again... Like a real movement and their connection with ATG and, and, and Ben Patrick. It's kind of like, and the same thing that I'd aim for with this podcast is giving people permission to do it because they see someone do it and you're like, you know, Ben Patrick, four knee surgeries, and then you see him like slamming a, a, a basketball hoop or those, uh, he climbs up on like, I think about two meter high and jumps down and lands on the ground and you're like, holy cow, that, but he's sweet. And I think he even does it like jumps down and then jumps up. Like he does a rebound off a massive box and you're like, 
that guy's had four knee surgeries and, and like his lunge and everything. And you know, for you, that just must be like, shit, I could, I, I could do, I could do something here. <laughs> yeah. And like, and I can, and I know I can, I just have not chosen to make it a priority. It's quite interesting. You say there, right? Like he, he gives people permission. Uh, I don't even know if he's giving people permission. He's just getting in their face, right? Because as we know, like I, you, I'm not going to do anything until I give myself that permission to be yeah. able to do it. But if I'm not seeing people like that do it and lead by example, then I'm just never, ever, ever going to be in a position to even give myself that p- permission. So, yeah, man, this that people like that or people like yourself, Stag, like doing this, you're doing exactly the same thing. You, I know, uh, well, Andrew Knox, for example, as well, listens to your podcast. Oh, and you have motivated him to start a podcast as well. You know, like we have these gifts. And although we may not think of ourselves as being completely gifted or that we're doing a hell of a lot, man, if you really sit down and look at what you're doing, People like yourself, like Andrew, like Ben, by just going out there and pushing forward, they're changing the world one person at a time. And like I said, even if it's not one person at a time, even if it's just one person, if we Mm. affect one person to be better human beings, I'm going to take that as a win, mate. Yeah, man, absolutely. Mate, um, your your wee boy Grayson did sleep like a champ, so I'll... uh let him get a bit of reward and some time with his father. <laughs> um, Dude, where... He doesn't sleep through the night that often, and he did last night. <laughs> yeah, so you better go give, give him a big congratulations. Where, where do people start tracking Chasing Man, um, Liam McElwee? Uh, where are you at these days, brother? Yeah, man. So Chasing Man, like I said, guys, if you, if you do want to – no, if you do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get salesy here. It's going to change your life. <laughs> <laughs> just come and give it a listen right like i i just i just really urge people just to come and give it a listen because it's just chats with dudes and every single chat that you have is completely different i would even say to the ladies listening you'll probably get something out of it as well um the the variety of guests that i've got coming on and had on board are just totally 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 different so Come and check us out. Chasing Man, obviously, we're on the podcasting platforms through Anchor. Uh, I don't think we've quite scratched into Apple yet. Uh, you'll have to tell me how that works. It just gets there eventually. just I gets think... there eventually, yeah. So yeah. we're not quite there yet. I, did, I recorded a bunch of little ones first. So I think I had like five or six before we did our episode, and that's how it had ended up on Apple, yeah. Um, I was having the same discussions with Greg Emerson and then all of a sudden it was on Apple. And hey, it looks like it doesn't matter anymore because Spotify is going to be the uh, big player all of a sudden because of a certain someone. (laughs) So so yeah, we're doing the podcast. Uh, We're on um, Instagram, chasing underscore man. Uh, That's just an account that I've just started. So we're trying to build that one up. Uh, Obviously, I've got my own personal one, which is LJ McElwee. And then uh, Facebook, same, same for me. Uh, there's a Chasing Man page, which is just sharing like all the podcasting stuff. And then we've actually got a private group. Uh, and that private group is is just a, a group where I jump on quite regularly and dive deeper into discussions, working through mindset, working through people's challenges and, and just standpoints. And And once again, you know, they're not, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a trained psychologist. I'm not, it's not therapy. It's nothing like that. It's just ideas that I've found that have worked for me that sort of help people through it. Uh, doing a bit of private coaching with uh, quite a few of the guys that are on that page, uh, which is super exciting. You get to dive deeper into it and, and really work on the nuts and bolts of just helping people be happier and, and head towards success in their life. Working. I think that's all them. Is that all the socials? I'm on Twitter. I don't really use it a hell of a lot. I'm, I'm uh, on TikTok, but being 40, I'm trying to work out that whole TikTok space and <laughs> how to use it to my advantage. But then once again, maybe TikTok's where I need to be. If I'm trying to make man talk sexy again, man, I've got to jump up on there, that TikTok and present in TikTok manner that it, it gets 
young men the permission to be able to express their emotions and maybe that's where I need to be going because Gary V says that's where I should be going. Yeah, he's been hot on it. Even when it was called music, like that was when I had a dabble. Like I, when I updated my phone the other day, I saw that TikTok was in my downloadables. I was like, oh, that's that's from when I, you know, I think put two videos up on Musically back in the day. But yeah, that's funny. Eh? And and one you mean on um, the previous Real Movement Intensive, there's a a lady I think from Prove It, and she might have been or someone something else. But yeah, she was pretty bullish on TikTok in, in terms of connecting things. She was saying that, you know, with all the real movement guys doing the splits and juggling, they're like, you should be on TikTok. That'd be awesome. Put that, put music to that. It'd be great. <laughs> you know, very, very enthusiastic American that, uh, that a bunch of Kiwis and Aussies are probably going, oh, <laughs> Yeah, these parts of the world are uh, way different than New Zealand and Australia. I mean, way different, right? Like, I don't know what a New Zealand, a New Zealand rated TikTok would look like. Uh, there's a few out there. Still, I think Joseph Parker, man, I don't know if you saw his Instagram uh, during COVID, but man, he came up with some cool videos. He did um, Afternoon Delight by um, Anchorman, and he played all four parts, and he included included like filming various parts of him shaving off his beard. I thought, man, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did see that. That was absolutely fabulous. So, yeah, man, just all on all the regular socials and the the biggest thing I could probably say to everyone listening out there is you you know you you don't need to be part of a, a group you don't need to be part of a tribe I definitely think you should because it, it makes it easier but just if you if anybody has anything that they're going through the biggest thing I would say right now is just get vulnerable mm. just get out there to whomever it is that you're closest with whether it be family members friends. Uh, a weekly trip to your psycho- psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever it is, but just let it all out, man. Mm. Because God damn it, it feels good to get shit off your shoulders. Wicked, mate. I'll let you uh, get to that legend of the sun and be on with your day. And I'm going to hit the hay <laughs> at the other end of the day. <laughs> Sounds good, but man. Thanks for your time. And uh, hey, Stag, thank you very much for doing what you do, mate, because I've already said it once, you, you definitely motivate me to uh, be a better person and to push forward in, in everything that I want in my life. So cheers, buddy. You're a rock star. Thanks, mate. And uh, likewise, thanks for keeping me accountable and, and uh, yeah, wanting to, to share the wealth. It's awesome. Thanks, brother. Keep it up. Cheers.